there's a live wire sticking out of the wall. This privately rented house costs nearly £600 a month. The bath has a defective seal all around the edge. Mm -hmm. We've also got a serious leak from the basin, which is disconnected from the wall as well. When landlords won't act, renters are told to go to their local council. Officers like Darren Gelsthorpe are there to hold bad landlords to account. But it's not always that easy. It would be lovely for me to say, put a new bathroom in and it gets done without any arguments, but that's generally not what happens. There's holes in the walls, floors, ceilings, cupboards, worktops. Is this a leak from above? That's a leak from the bathroom above, yes. The ceiling could collapse. This kitchen is way beyond its useful lifespan uh, and it just needs, it needs ripping out and replacing. Darren and his team inspect hundreds of properties like this each year. A quarter of privately rented homes in England fail to meet the government's decent home standard. Here in Derby, the situation is even worse. Darren's already onto his second inspection for the day. This time, he's been tipped off by the fire service. A family of six is living in a one-bedroom flat. So I have a, a checklist of things that we typically check, all floor ceilings, lights, electrics. Often there are things like you don't expect to see a fridge in the bedroom. The tenants here have been granted refugee status. They're on the wait list for social housing. But so are almost 7,000 other applicants in Derby, including more than 1,000 families in need of a three-bedroom house. So in the meantime, this family is using benefits to privately rent this small flat for £600 a month. Certainly for a family of six, it's woefully inadequate. And so this room, you say, isn't big enough for one person, and yet there's three people sleeping in here. Darren's here to determine whether the flat is safe to live in. <sighs> Jesus. But the impact of living in poor conditions goes far beyond the physical. About this uh, situation, uh, really very sad. I know nothing is left in my power now this time. There's nothing is left. Already is finished. My don't, don't say that. Already is finished. No, don't because say that. You're young. You're uh, very yeah. young. Four beautiful children. My mind is full. That was that was quite harrowing. Uh, dealing with a guy that's basically talking about ending his life because of his housing conditions is uh, pretty shocking. Does that take a toll on you? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I'm emotional now. Yeah, it's really, really difficult to deal with. After an inspection, officers like Darren rate how severe the problem is. If it's an immediate risk to safety, the council is obliged to issue an improvement notice, which forces the landlord to do repairs. If they don't, the council can prosecute or issue a civil penalty notice of up to £30,000. It's estimated that 1.6 million people in England are renting homes with these safety concerns. But the vast majority of councils in England rarely, if ever, use those powers. Data obtained from 252 councils shows that almost 70% had issued less than 10 civil penalty notices in the last five years. Almost 40% had issued none at all. And almost half had not prosecuted a single landlord. That's in response to over 430,000 complaints made about private landlords and agents. Derby City Council is more proactive than many others. In the last five years, it has punished 59 rogue landlords. But Darren says current regulation doesn't go far enough. On paper, we can give a civil penalty of up to £30,000. In practice, it would have to be a property that was incredibly poor. Should fines be higher? Yes, definitely. It is cost effective to illegally evict a tenant if you're only going to get fined £500 but you get your property back six months earlier. Could you be doing more? Absolutely. If we had more resources we could do we could do so much more. In the last five years in Harrow, in northwest London, renters have made thousands of complaints about housing disrepair. They've resulted in 49 civil penalties and 10 landlords prosecuted. Sarah lives in Harrow. Hi, how are you? We can't show you her face because she and her husband are refugees. She's afraid if she speaks publicly, it not only endangers her safety, but threatens her already vulnerable housing situation. We can't breathe, you know. During the night, my husband and I have a cough and we always You're scratching. scratching yeah. Yes. Sarah and her husband have been living in conditions like these since the end of last year. Just two months ago, this room was painted over. After three or two weeks, yeah, they yeah. come back again. Before that, it looked like this. We use the inhaler because of this uh, mm. black mold and damp. You can feel that the air is, is yeah. thick, isn't it? Yeah, mm. yeah. 
Late last year, the landlord began developing extra flats on top of this building. Not long after, a major leak appeared and the block has been covered in mould ever since. The landlord blames bad weather. There is a mould here and we have a, a worm here. You had worms, worms. coming out of, yeah. out of the roof? Yeah. Wow. The council first visited the block when the problem was reported and informally asked the landlord to make repairs, which both the council and the landlord say they did. Months later, after a second inspection, the council identified more issues and that extensive mould growth was causing chest problems for tenants. Finally, almost three months after that, they issued a formal improvement notice, which the landlord has appealed. Meanwhile, Sarah says the only improvements made to her flat was anti-mould treatment and four coatings of paint. But the mould keeps coming back. Renting this flat costs £1,200 a month. Why don't you leave? We can't, you know. We, when we are looking for the property, they said, OK, show me your pay slip. And I said, no, I can't show you because uh, I received the benefit. As soon as they uh, heard these things, they said, no, we don't have any property to give you. So effectively, you're stuck here living yeah. in these conditions. Yeah, we can't move anywhere. If you could give a message to the council, what would it be? Please take care of us. We are a human. They have a responsibility to take care of the, all the people not only the landlord. So you can see one of the leaks here coming down that has to be contained by this bucket. Jackson Keynes from Harrow Legal Aid has been representing the other tenants in the block with similar problems. When I first visited this block, um, this stairwell area was visually even more shocking because we saw sort of stalactites coming down from the, the water penetration. That's been tidied up a little bit, but as you can still, the leak continues and they've had to keep buckets out here. But the council has acted. They issued an improvement notice. It's been agonisingly slow at each stage to get the council to act. I think it speaks to lots of broader systemic issues which affect Harrow, but also London and the, the housing crisis in general in the UK. I've come to meet Gareth Jones. He's the only qualified environmental health officer in Harrow Council's housing team. I've never known a time like this in the last 30 years in my career. It's all hands to the pump all the time. We're doing what we can. We have visited a block here in Harrow. The council has visited twice and identified extensive mould growth that was a risk to health and safety. And yet the tenants here are still living in these conditions. I want to show you some images and just see what you make of them. That's awful. It's horrific. They have a responsibility to take care of all the people, not only the landlord. What's your response to that? I'm, I totally agree with the lady. I absolutely agree with her. But we, we, we're certainly not siding with landlords. We're not siding with anybody. We're impartial with the council. If a landlord comes back and says, right, I will do the work, here's my plan, I'm going to do the work, then it doesn't seem proportionate to start serving notices from day one. The backlogs will get even bigger and bigger and bigger. By far the majority are good landlords, but the poorer landlords, that they need to be targeted and outed. But isn't that your job? Yeah, it is my job. Exactly. And I will continue to fight that fight. What sort of toll does this take on you personally? It's difficult. Um, if I give up, then what hope is there? Since we filmed, the council has revisited Sarah's block and says it found no remaining hazards. They're now reviewing whether the improvement notice should be lifted. We revisited too. Sarah's flat has been treated again and repainted, but she's still worried the mould will return. In the corridors, some repair work has been made to patch up the holes, but others were still dripping. We contacted the landlord too, but they refused to comment on the story. On the wider issue of private renting, the government told us they expect local councils to step up enforcement against rogue landlords and are providing funding for that to happen. And as the Renters Reform Bill slowly makes its way through Parliament, the government says it will make it easier for local authorities to take effective enforcement action. Tenants, landlords and Westminster don't always have the same ideas when it comes to the housing market. But everyone agrees that a key to making renting more livable is finding and punishing criminal landlords. Over the last year, I've been able to see the rent crisis up close. Everyone I have met, from students to landlords, thinks the system is failing. The Renters Reform Bill promises to help fix it, but housing in this country is already at breaking point. 
and it's hard to imagine how those measures will help those suffering.